Have you ever had an unexpected encounter with somebody that changed your life? I think back like when Luke Skywalker met Yoda for the first time. <laughs> on, on the planet, just looking for the Jedi Master, and he, and he bumps into Yoda, and Yoda just seems like a goofy guy that doesn't know what he's doing, and he's, he takes a bite of Luke's um, breakfast bar and everything. He's just annoying. But it turns out that he was the Jedi Master that, that Luke was looking for. And, of course, that meeting and that training time changed his life forever. Uh, I was thinking back to when I first met my wife, Pastor Shelley. I know. We were in college, and I was sitting up front in the A row with all the studious people. And Shelly was in the C row with all the fun people. <laughs> and, you know, we were kind of around each other for a while. We were in a class with each other for some time before we really even realized who each other was. But I remember the first time that I really encountered her was when the two of us, we went to the Bumbershoot Festival in Seattle and, and played mini golf together. And did you let me win? I can't remember. I kind of think maybe. Uh, and there was just something different about her on that day. I, it was just like a glow, a heavenly glow <laughs> around her. And that encounter that I had with her changed my life forever for the better. And sometimes you can have an encounter that you weren't expecting. How many of you can remember some time that you encountered someone? Maybe you encountered a celebrity. Maybe you encountered your spouse or uh, just a teacher that changed your life. Do you remember? Raise your hands if you, you can remember an encounter that changed your life. Yeah, many of us here in the room, and I, and I suspect some more people online as well. Well, we're in a series called, a series of Sunday morning messages called Encounter. And we're talking about how to encounter God for yourself, how to, how to come face to face with God, how to experience his power, his goodness, his love in your own life. And we've been talking about different things that you can do to sort of get yourself in position to encounter God and to, to be with him. And today, I, I want to talk about an encounter with God that changes your life forever. I want to talk to you specifically about the power of of the Holy Spirit in your life, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And I'm going to go to be reading several scriptures, uh, a lot of them in John, but I'm going to start with John 14. If you want to turn there with me, that's cool, uh, just to, to get, get the Bible open for yourself. John 14, verses 16 to 17, and where this is in, in, this, in the story of Jesus is it's, uh, it is towards the end of Jesus' time on earth. And so you can see him kind of ramping up and amping up what he's talking to the disciples about because he knows that he's not going to be with them face to face in this way for much longer. And the disciples are grieving. They're sensing that. And Jesus says, I can tell you're grieving because I told you I'm leaving you. I'm going away from you. And so the disciples are going through all this stuff, and Jesus begins to tell them the most important things, the things that he really wants to get through to their hearts, the things that are going to make a difference for them after he leaves them in this face-to-face -face way. In John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17, Jesus said, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit. And this word advocate as a word for the Holy Spirit to describe who he is and what he's like, that's a word we, all, we just always zoom in on that because it, it is a word that's kind of hard to translate. It, it literally means someone who's called alongside you to help you. In various ways, this word sometimes is translated comforter or helper or diff different ways. Advocate is, is a great way. But Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you another advocate. So who is the first one? Himself. He's saying, I've been here. I've been your advocate. I've been taking care of you. 
but I'm going to send you another advocate because I am going away from this face-to-face relationship with you. And so I want to talk to you about a few things that you need the power of the Holy Spirit for in your life. As an advocate, he brings his power for you into your life and he accomplishes different kinds of things, and I'm not going to hit them all today, but there's some things I want you to know the Holy Spirit wants to accomplish in your life. So first of all, you need Holy Spirit power to be truly saved. You need Holy Spirit power to be truly saved. Every Sunday when I preach, every Sunday, no matter who is speaking, no matter who is preaching, Every Sunday, without fail, we give you an invitation to be saved. But I know this. That's my part. But there's there are two other people that need to be involved: the Holy Spirit and you. I've got a little bit of a dry throat going on, and so I'm gonna try to lubricate as I go. You need the Holy Spirit power to truly to be truly saved. I, I, I've just got to be honest with you. Going to church doesn't save you. It's a good thing. Obviously, I think you should do it. I do it. <laughs> it's a good thing, but it does not save you. Doing good, good deeds does not save you. And I know that most of the world, I would say probably 99% of the world, does believe that good deeds are what saves you. you. You really hear this at a funeral. And that's when everyone starts talking about they did so many good things, I know he's in a better place. But doing good things doesn't get you in a better place. And I just got to be honest with you. I've got to level with you. It's so important. Trying to be a good person does not save you. Jesus had the coolest conversation with a Pharisee named Nicodemus. And we got to see in this last week's, uh, this week's episode of The Chosen that we're, we're watching uh, as, a, as kind of a, a part of our Bible study that we're doing on Sunday nights. Oh, my goodness. Uh, have you seen that episode with Jesus and Nicodemus in the, uh, the uh, meeting by night? Oh, my goodness. I was weeping by the end. I couldn't even look at Shelly because every time he did it, I started crying again. It was so powerful. And so beautiful that this Pharisee, this leader of Israel, came to Jesus and was basically saying, what does God want? What does God have for us? And Jesus tells him, you got to be born again. And in verse, uh, John chapter 3, verse 6, Jesus is trying to explain to Nicodemus, it's not about following rules. It's not about even keeping the law. That is not what saves a person. Jesus said, humans can reproduce only human life. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. The Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that a person can be truly born again spiritually. I can give you the invitation. You You can say the words, but it is the Holy Spirit that gives new life on the inside of you. He makes your spirit alive inside. In John chapter 16, verse 8 to 11, Jesus says something that I think is often misunderstood by the church. But it's such a powerful message about what the Holy Spirit does in our life. I don't want you to miss it. I probably probably could have preached a whole message on this today, but I'm trying to cram everything in I can uh, today. Uh, John 16, starting verse 8, and when he, so Jesus has been talking about the Holy Spirit, our advocate, when he comes... He will, he'll do three things. And so he, Jesus lists them. He will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness. Now, notice the word is righteousness, not unrighteousness. We look at this list and think it's all negative. It is not. Jesus says when he comes, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. And then Jesus says, he kind of slows down, he takes each of those three things, and he explains what he meant by those things. So verse 9, he says, the world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Now you would thought he might have listed murder, adultery, just all kinds of stuff he could have listed, sins. But he said, the world's sin that the Holy Spirit is going to come and deal with and convict people of is that it refuses 
to believe in me. And Jesus says that is a sin, and that is an eternal sin. It's not your bad deeds that keep you from heaven and send you to hell. This past weekend, I was in a situation where uh, someone came up to me, and I just snapped right back at him. I was like, why did I do that? That was, I was, that was so rude of me to do that. person did not deserve that. I did a bad deed, but I'm still going to heaven because it's not whether or not I do that that keeps me in or out of heaven. It is my faith in Jesus Christ to save me. So what I did, because I'm a believer, because I'm a Christian, I did two things. I repented and asked Jesus to forgive me of that because that was wrong. And I, I struck up a conversation with that person and just gave them my full attention in a loving way. So I tried to make amends. But those things that I did didn't save me. It's my faith in Jesus that saved me. Because I'm saved, I did those things. Does that make sense? So I'm not saying that because bad deeds are not what sends you to hell, just go ahead and do bad deeds. No, that's not the thing at all. Put your faith in Jesus and start living righteously. That's, that's what we're called to do, absolutely. But the world sin that Jesus has in mind that the Holy Spirit's going to come to deal with is refusing to believe in Jesus. If, if, if your bad deeds are not what actually keeps you out of heaven, then all, all we'd all have to do is just totally clean up our lives. Bam, we're all going to heaven. But that's not what gets you to heaven. Bad deeds are not what sends you to hell. It is refusing to believe in Jesus Christ. When a, fuse, a person refuses to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he paid the penalty for your sins, by sacrificing his life on the cross, by refusing to believe that, that is what condemns a person. So the Holy Spirit comes, and he convicts the sinner of their sin, that sin of refusing to believe in Jesus. But the Holy Spirit doesn't necessarily just come along and bounce on every unsaved person in the world, because God has a plan for how every unsaved person in the world hears about Jesus. Do you know what that plan is? Through witnesses. So when you've experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, when you are saved, your, your words are needed. And that's why my words, I use my words since I have this platform. I use my words every single Sunday to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts a person of sin. And that's when I believe a person is truly born again. It's, it's when the Holy Spirit, they, a person hears them, hears an invitation, hears a message, hears the gospel, and, and the Holy Spirit convicts that person realizes, oh, it's me. I'm a sinner. That, that's the work of the Holy Spirit to help that person know that. And then that person chooses Jesus. All those three things work together, the witness, the Holy Spirit, and the person's willingness. Then a person is truly saved. Verse 10, Jesus is going on and he's explaining these three things that the Holy Spirit will do. Notice that in verse 10, he reiterates the word is righteousness. So we, we, we can kind of look at this list and go, oh, wow, the Holy Spirit's going to come and do a bunch of like mean or rule-keeping stuff. But that's not what Jesus is saying at all. The Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus talks about what the Holy Spirit will do. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. How is righteousness available? Through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes, and Jesus is saying, I, I came and I showed you how to live righteously. You had the law, everybody failed, no one lived a perfect life, but Jesus said, I came and I showed you how to live a perfect life, a life of loving God above all else and loving others as yourself. Jesus showed us how. But now Jesus was going away, so he said the Holy Spirit's going to come and he is going to show you and uh, he's going to show point to my righteousness, Jesus is saying, and he is going to show you now how to live righteously. The Holy Spirit empowers you to live like Jesus. So righteousness is still available even though Jesus is no longer with us face to face. He's here by his spirit right now. But we, we can't see what he would do in every situation, but the Holy Spirit can remind us of what Jesus would do in every situation. And then Jesus explains the last thing that he said in that list of three. When the Holy Spirit comes, he, ta he said that, that um, he will convict us of coming judgment. Verse 11, judgment will come 
because the ruler of this world, Satan, has already been judged. So he has had his sentencing, and he has been judged guilty of leading the world astray. And, and Jesus, on the cross, proclaimed his doom. So what, the devil now is on death row awaiting execution. He's sentenced. He is defeated, but the execution has not happened yet. So he is still working, and he is still trying to deceive. He's still trying to take down as many people as possible with him. The devil is still very active, but he knows his days are numbered. And so the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, helps you connect the dots that Satan has already been sentenced to judgment. And that all who follow Satan, their judgment is decreed also. Unless they put their faith in Jesus. So it's foolish to not put your faith in Jesus. But you can't see that without the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the advocate. So on the flip side, if you are a born-again believer, Jesus is not saying here, the Holy Spirit came to convict you of sin. That was not his emphasis. The Holy Spirit came to convict the world of its sin of refusing to believe in Jesus. You already believe in Jesus. He's not coming to take you down. He's not coming to beat you down. He, when, now, when you hear the Holy Spirit say, judgment is coming, you start rejoicing because you are free from that. So that you, the Holy Spirit confirms in you and shows you that you are free from sin. You are free from Satan's rule. You are free from the power of sin. You are free from the coming judgment. You have eternal life. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I think someone ought to shout, clap your hands, say amen. Woo! Yes. And Jesus says that is the work of the Holy Spirit. So if you're not yet truly saved, if you're not converted, if you have not been changed from death to life on the inside of you, if you're not born again, I usually say it this way, but I'm praying right now that the Holy Spirit would convict you. As I am, as I am speaking the gospel, as I'm preaching God's word, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit, right wherever you are, maybe you're listening to this live or you're listening to this later and you're, you're watching uh, on our YouTube channel. I'm praying that right now the Holy Spirit will convict you of sin and, and warn you of judgment and invite you to righteousness. That's what he is here to do so that you could truly be saved Pray that he would point to Jesus and his righteousness and, and help you to break free from sin and Satan's rule. So, first of all, you need the power, the Holy Spirit power to be truly saved. But I want to go beyond that. You need Holy Spirit power to thrive as you follow Jesus. You need Holy Spirit power to thrive as you follow Jesus. You need his power. You, you can white knuckle you can try so hard to be good or to have a good life, but you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need divine power working in you and through you. Jesus was the disciples' advocate when he walked with them face to face for three years. He taught them by example. He, he showed them how to minister to the broken. He showed them how to relate to others. Jesus showed the disciples how to please God. He even taught them how to pray. He had their backs in one of Jesus' final prayers. I think it's in John, yeah, John 17. He reminded the Father, Father, I have protected and guarded the ones you've given me so that no one would be lost. Jesus was their advocate. He had their backs. But now Jesus has your backs through the Holy Spirit. He has sent the Holy Spirit to be your advocate. So Jesus, when he took on flesh and bones, he was only in one place at one time. But now by his spirit, he can be anywhere around the world. He can be in you, moving in you, having your back, leading you, guiding you. If you're an apprentice of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is your constant companion 24-7. So when Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you, how does he do that? By the Holy Spirit working in your life. He is the one who is near. And Jesus never abandons you. The Holy Spirit never abandons you. So the Holy Spirit advocates for you now. 
He advocates for you by being your counselor. That's one, one aspect of being an advocate. So when you need wisdom, you can go to the Holy Spirit at any time and say, guide me, show me, what, what am I to do in this situation? And when your prayer is to honor the Father and honor Jesus, the Holy Spirit will help you. He will answer. He will give you the wisdom that you need. He's your advocate by guiding you into all truth. And all these things that, I, that I'm saying right now, I'm just paraphrasing what Jesus said uh, largely in the last several chapters of John. These are Jesus' words about the Holy Spirit. He is going to remind you of everything Jesus said, everything Jesus spoke, everything Jesus taught, everything Jesus did. The Holy Spirit is there to remind you of that, no matter where you are or what you're going through. The Holy Spirit communicates to you the heart of God, the plan of God for your life and for the world. He's the communicator. And one of the really cool ways that the Holy Spirit has communicated to us is through the written word of God. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, the, the, the word of God tells us that it is Holy Spirit breathed. The Holy Spirit came upon people and said, you got to write this down. This is what God wants his children to know. It was the Holy Spirit long before the day of Pentecost, throughout all those centuries that the Bible was being written. It was the Holy Spirit who was moving upon those authors. He was breathing upon them and helping them to write. And that is one great way that the Holy Spirit communicates to us is through the word, the written word, but also many other ways. A still small voice that comes to you and says, don't do that. Back up, back up. You know that's going to hurt you. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Or the Holy Spirit might say to you something like, hey, go encourage that person over there. They're really having a rough day and minister in my name. Go share, go share your story of Jesus with that person over. That's the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you. So he's advocating for you. In other words, he is getting the help you need. That's what an ad advocate does. Leads you to resources, has your back, helps you, leads you, guides you, steers you. That's what your advocate does. And the Holy Spirit is your advocate. The Holy Spirit comforts you in times of loss or trouble. How do we even make it through when someone that we love dies? How, how do we make it when, when uh, you lose your job or your world comes tumbling down in one way or another? How do you even make it? It is through the Holy Spirit, your advocate. You can lean on him. You can rest in him. You can fall back on him. The Holy Spirit produces good fruit in your life, and that's one way that he advocates for you. He is advocating for you to have, a, have the best possible life that you could ever have. And so the Holy Spirit actually produces fruit in you. In Galatians 5.22, it lists it out. What The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Often when I pray for those things on that list... I just pray, Holy Spirit, work in me, because I know if you're at work in me, this fruit is going to come out. Yeah. You're going to develop this fruit in me. So come and work in me, Holy Spirit. When you're at a crossroads in your life, go to the Holy Spirit. Pursue him. Think, uh, 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 take time to be with him. I, I, I sometimes think of the Holy Spirit kind of like uh, a, a wild animal. Uh, let's let's pick a nice, gentle, fluffy one. Uh, uh, but if you go tromping through the woods, making a lot of noise, banging stuff, you're never going to see a quiet little fluffy animal. Sometimes you got to just sit down and be quiet and take some time and let him come to you. And so I want to encourage you to do that as you're seeking the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you just need to... Just quit talking. Open the word of God and just listen. Maybe put on a worship song and just say, Holy Spirit, come. Just come. I need you now. When you feel abandoned or rejected, you can say, but I am not abandoned. I am not rejected. I am not cast aside because the Holy Spirit is my advocate. 
I always have someone on my side, always. I'm never totally alone. And if you have put your faith in Jesus, you are never totally alone. The Holy Spirit is your advocate. He is here for you. When you're trying to overcome a bad habit, um, trying to not have unchrist like reactions like I had this weekend, when, when you're trying to do that, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life to be able to thrive. Here's another, uh, another thing, another kind of category of thing that I see the Holy Spirit does. You need Holy Spirit power to effectively minister to others. You need Holy Spirit power to effectively minister to others. Now, I'm, I'm a helper. Like, that, that, is, that is who I am. There's lots of good things I can do to help people. Uh, there's lots of good things that charitable organizations do to help people, that philanthropists do to help people. But to effectively minister to someone spiritually, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so we are, we are going to give away hundreds of gifts. But on that day, we're going to offer prayer. And it's been our experience, people want prayer for what they're going through. We set up tables. Uh, last year we did it along this side. I don't know if that'll be where again, but we set up several tables. We had little prayer teams. And man, we got to pray with, with people. And in order to, like, we can give them a gift, and that's going to help. And it's right. Jesus commends it. In Matthew 25, he says, I'm going to be looking for that. Because when you give a gift to someone in need, you're giving it to me. So that's very important. It's good. But to effectively minister to a, per a person's spirit, you need the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 10, uh, the, the Bible describes different kinds of spiritual gifts. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts. But the same spirit is the source of them all. So the Holy Spirit gives gifts. And it's giving down to verse 7. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can hurt each other. Is that what it says? What does it say? So we can help each other. Why does the Holy Spirit give the, these gifts I'm about to talk about? So that we can Yes, that's a really important thing. These gifts are for ministry. They are not gifts to make the, uh, the person who's, who's sharing that gift feel better or feel cool or feel proud or lifted up. Holy Spirit gifts are given to help other people. And then he lists those gifts. The ability to give wise advice, a message of special wisdom, great faith, the gift of healing, power to perform miracles, the ability to prophesy or speak the words of God, the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit, the ability to speak in unknown languages, and the ability to interpret those unknown languages. I'm going to talk about tongues or unknown languages again in just a moment, but I, I just want, want you to realize when in this list, this, this gift, the gift that it's talking about that must have an interpretation is, is a, a spiritual gift given to help another person. Uh, and it is, it's the same in essence. It's, it's unknown tongues, unknown languages, but it has a different function than the function that I'm going to talk about in just a minute. But just to kind of wrap this, this part up, verse 31, so you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. If you really want to minister to healing to someone, pray that the Holy Spirit would give you the gift of healing so that, that we can go beyond just praying and actually see the person healed. When, when, when you're trying to minister to someone that is in transition and you need wisdom from God, it's the Holy Spirit. Seek the Holy Spirit to give you a gift to minister effectively to others. And here's the last category that I have today. You need Holy Spirit power to be a witness to the world. You need Holy Spirit power to be a witness to the world. I'm sure there are some other things I did not have time for today, but I really wanted to zoom in on these, these, these reasons we need Holy Spirit power. You need Holy Spirit power. Jesus taught his disciples by example and by his word how to live a righteous life. But when it came time for Jesus to return to heaven... And he was going to put the kingdom of God into their hands. He told them, you're going to need more than my example. 
You're going to need more than my teaching. You're going to need more than book learning to be able to be a witness to the world and bring the kingdom of God to the world. He told them, you're going to need divine power. You're going to need Holy Spirit power. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, another verse in the Bible, Jesus said, but you will receive power. Someone say power. power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my what? Witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. There there are several stories in the book of Acts about what Jesus is talking about, the Holy Spirit coming upon you. It's sometimes called receiving the Holy Spirit, sometimes called being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Like it's like being baptized with water, being immersed with the Holy Spirit. And one of, the, one of the things that we notice is there's some commonality, some, some common things happen each time they're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 4, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happened? They began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So these newly empowered by the Holy Spirit disciples, led by Peter, they, they stood up. They preached to thousands of people. They became witnesses, no longer scared and in hiding. Now they were out there in the public marketplace, and they preached Jesus, and thousands of people got saved at one time because of Holy Spirit power. They had been with Jesus for three years. Jesus had even said to them, he breathed on them, and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And they, 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 I believe that was their conversion time. The, the, God came into them, but they needed more. They needed a baptism in the Holy Spirit for power to be a witness to the world. And man, when the Holy Spirit baptized them, they became witnesses that turned the world upside down and went from like 120 followers of Jesus to 3,000, bam, in one meeting. And then it just kept going from there. Tongues, the, 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 uh, the ability to speak in a language you've never learned, an unknown tongue, an unknown language, is the one biblical, physical, initial sign of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. So that's what we always look for when we pray for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We're, we're looking, we're, we're saying, Lord, we, show us that it happened by giving them this gift that they'd be able to speak in an unknown tongue. In Acts chapter 10, verses 45 to 46, the first non-Jewish believer, Cornelius, to, to, uh, to um, be baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, they were, uh, the uh, disciples were amazed that they were being saved, that they're being filled with the Spirit. And it says that, that the gift, they were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too, the non Jewish people. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. That was the sign that told them, oh, they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit just like we have. In Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 6, Paul, an uh, early church leader, was on a missionary trip. He shared the good news about Jesus with a group of 12 people who were trying to follow God. He called them believers. They were baptized in water. He he tells them about Jesus. They said, we believe. They got baptized in water. Paul laid his hands on them. And then Acts 19, 6, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. So they already had the Holy Spirit in them. They were saved, but then they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied. In Acts chapter 8, many people were baptized in this city, uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit, but the narrator does not mention tongues. But something did happen that was physical, tangible, uh, enough, and powerful enough that Simon, the sorcerer, said, hey, I'll give you some money if you give me the power to help people be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't just that, you know, they just silently received. Something happened. And this is one of those cases where it, it would be consistent to say, well, it would be consistent with the book of Acts that they, they, were, uh, they spoke in other tongues. Could there be another sign that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit or that a person has been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Like maybe, uh, maybe just that you became more loving or maybe that you're more fruitful. I would say yes, there could. The Bible does not say, does not have a sentence that says the, this is the only sign. But I would just say this, we wouldn't know. 
Because the sign, the one sign that the Bible does give us over and over and over again is the sign of the initial physical, uh, biblical evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit is speaking with other tongues. So I am not going to say to anyone else, you haven't spoken in tongues, you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. I, I'm not the judge of that. But I can say, oh, you have spoken in tongues? Okay, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Do you see the difference? Yeah. So no condemnation there. Lots of room for the Holy Spirit to move. He's bigger than me. I trust him. I'm just trying the best I can to understand the Bible and to communicate that to all of us. So you need Holy Spirit power to be a witness to the world. And that is one of the things that is accomplished when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. So how do you access this power? Well, just very simply, be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If you're a believer in Jesus, you have his spirit living inside of you, but there is more. Over and over again, we see this. Jesus gave, he breathed the Holy Spirit on his disciples after he rose from the dead. But Jesus said, but there's more disciples. Don't go out and try to do any ministry. Wait in this city until you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father. So Jesus said that. It's very clear. And then Paul, again, he meets a group of believers. He tells them about Jesus. They put their faith in Jesus. They get baptized in water. And then, so they have the Holy Spirit inside of them. But then they get baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial physical evidence of speaking in other tongues. So how do you access the power for those, these, these many things I've been talking about today? It is to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Your part is to wait on the Holy Spirit in prayer. G Jesus told his disciples, you, you pray, you wait, and the Holy Spirit will be poured out on you. In another place, Jesus said, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. A lot of times we apply this to other things, and I, I suppose that is fine, but Jesus was specific talking about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. He said in that same passage, ask, seek, knock, he said, how much more will your heavenly Father uh, give you the Holy Spirit to his children who ask him? So when you ask, don't just ask once, ask and ask, uh, seek and seek, knock and knock, if, if that's what it takes. And I believe that you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, if you've already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, how do you access this power? Continue to walk in the Spirit. Uh, uh, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 14, 4, you are built up. You personally are built up when you speak in other tongues. That's, that's that, that gift of tongues that is not for interpretation. That's, it's a different, it's the same in essence function. It is, a, it is a language of prayer and communion that comes when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. So if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, man, every time you pray daily, speak in other tongues and, and praise and worship the Father in a language that he gives you by the Holy Spirit. So today I want to do something a little bit different than we normally do. And, and I, I want to invite you to all stand, first of all. Would you stand uh, right now? And I want to invite you in just a moment to come up front to a place of prayer and to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. So I've been talking about four different categories of things of the Holy Spirit that you need Holy Spirit power for. If you need Holy Spirit power, then I'm going to show you those on the screen right now. If you need Holy Spirit power in those areas, then um, go ahead and show it, would you? Show that slide. If you need Holy Spirit power in these areas, I invite you to come up front. Pastor Christian, Pastor Shelley are going to be down here uh, praying for you. I'm just going to stay back a little bit <laughs> and let them uh, be close to you. Uh, and I'm, I want to pray with online folks in just a moment. So if, if you need to be saved, if you've not been converted, if you're not yet a Christian, if you're not yet born again, come on down. Turn away from your sin. Turn your life over to Jesus. Let him lead, and the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you that new life. So they're going to ask you, what do you need? What do you need from the Holy Spirit when you come down? If you want to thrive in your Christian life, overcome those habits, be led by the Lord. If you, if you want to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, word of wisdom, knowledge, great faith, healing, miracles, come on down. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That is how the power of the Holy Spirit is released in your life. And uh, if you, if you want to be a powerful witness, come and be filled or refilled 
with a with a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so pastor, pastors, why don't you come and just uh, spread out here in the front. Uh, maybe why don't you get out um, uh, anointing oil and Kleenex just in case, and get them out here available. And then I'm just going to invite you. Why don't we dim the lights a little bit if we could? Let's just dim the lights. Yep, awesome. And uh, Stephen's going to lead us in worship. Just as, uh, as, and you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit as, as you lead. I know you will. Uh, I, I want to encourage everyone. Don't go quite yet. I'll, I'll dismiss you in just a moment. I want to invite you to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit right now. Come forward for prayer. If you're, if you're not up front for prayer, worship and invite the Holy Spirit in greater measure to be your advocate and come into your life. So come now. Come now. Go ahead. Go ahead, Stephen, and lead us when you're ready. Come now and let us just minister to you. And let's see the Holy Spirit do something powerful in your life. Come now. And my vision is that every one of you would come. Okay, that's, 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 what, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, but if you don't want to stay, stay and pray where you are, still seek the Holy Spirit, all right? So, but my vision is that we'll just take time. We've got time to minister to you, and we want to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit, all right? Let's come. Let's worship. Let's go. Let's do it. If you have never put your faith in Jesus, then I just encourage you right now to turn from your sin, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead. I would pray a prayer something like this. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. Make me new on the inside. Make me born again. And when you pray that prayer, the Holy Spirit comes, and he gives you new life. You can be saved. You can be truly saved. And know that judgment is not coming for you. And that is such a wonderful thing. So I just want to encourage you, Lord, to, to give your life to Jesus and be saved. Be, be born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. But if you've already put your faith in Jesus, if you're already saved, then I want to ask you and invite you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you, if you put your faith in Jesus... He, his Holy Spirit lives inside of you. But, but there's more. There's more for you. God has more for you. He wants to come in power in your life. In John um, 7, 
Jesus was, was at, um, uh, standing among a crowd of people, and he said, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow in your heart. And when he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. I want you to know there is a river of life in the Holy Spirit to you. Set yourself up to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Simply ask. Jesus said, just ask the Father. The Father wants to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. He does not say no when you ask him, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. So I just want to encourage you online, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want, I want to pray for you. And if you've already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you've already been baptized, I want to encourage you to be refilled be refilled with the Holy Spirit. There's precedent in the book of Acts. We've seen the, the crowds of disciples that had already been baptized. The Holy Spirit came and filled them again. So if you today, um, uh, if, you, if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, would you just lift your hand to God right where you're at? Maybe you're in your car right now or in your living room. It doesn't matter where you are because God is everywhere. And I just want to encourage you to open up your heart to him and to invite him in. So let's pray. Lord, right now, Lord, we just begin to pray to you. First of all, Lord, I pray that you would save us from our sins. Lord God, that you would come in, forgive us, make us new, change us from the inside out. And Lord, for those of us who are already saved, we're, we're already believers in Jesus, I pray, Lord, you would come and us with the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you'd help each person who's praying right now to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Lord, I know that when you come in power, you can do anything you want. Lord, I pray that you would give us that initial biblical, physical evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, of speaking in other tongues. So Lord, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would come, that you would, that you would baptize each person who is praying right now online, uh, whether it's live or even Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, descend on them in power, in glory, in victory, like a dove. Come and bring everything that you have and come and baptize in the Holy Spirit right now. And Lord, I pray that you would show us that it's happened by helping us to be able to speak in other tongues, Lord God, a heavenly language that we can use to praise you and sing and to, to be built up on, in our spirit, Lord. I just want to encourage you, friend, if you're praying to be baptized in the Holy Spirit right now, don't, don't clap your mouth shut. Uh, I don't want you to fake anything. But whatever comes to you to, you to speak, speak it. Speak it. Uh, as an act of faith, step out and, and just say, Lord, I believe you're baptizing me in the Holy Spirit. And if one syllable or a whole language comes to you, speak it out. And, and let you. You've just got to be yielded. He brings the, the power. He brings the language. But you've got to speak. You've got to then submit and asking. All right? So I believe that right now, I believe that right now as you're praying that the Holy Spirit is coming. I, I have a friend uh, who uh, just told me about an experience recently where she was watching a, a service online and they gave it this exact invitation. And she felt that uh, what Jesus was talking about in John 7, she felt the Holy Spirit just welling up inside of her. She had already been baptized in the Spirit, but she felt the, a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit just as a, as a river of a life that started in her middle and just rose up through her whole body. And I pray that that would happen right now. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Like a river of a life with power to thrive, power to be saved, power to have the gifts of the Spirit operate through us, power to be a witness. And Lord, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you begin to pour your gifts of the Holy Spirit out through your people.
the people in this room, the people online. Lord, I pray for a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment, prophecy, uh, faith, miracles, tongues, interpretation. Lord, I pray for those gifts, Lord. I pray for those gifts, Lord, that we would be able to help others and effectively minister. So we're going to just, I'm just going to leave you in, in, in Stephen's uh, good hands and, and just continue to worship, continue to seek, continue to, 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 um, uh, to uh, pray for being baptized as the Holy Spirit. Continue to speak in tongues if the Holy Spirit is baptizing you now. Continue. continue to speak and, and seek the, the Holy Spirit. We're, we're here to pray for you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I, I don't, don't, don't feel in any rush to leave. We're just going to continue to worship. Uh, I, but you can go whenever you're ready, of course. Um, just a reminder that um, Connect cards or offerings can go in the box in the back. If you put your faith in Jesus today, we have got a verse to help you be discipled called following jesus see larry in the lobby larry warford in the lobby afterwards and he'll get you a free book and some info about that and then after we're done praying today we're going to set up for tonight if you, if if some of you are, are around and want to help us set up that'd be awesome i if you do leave early i just would you just leave quietly so that we can keep this place a place to seek the lord we're going to keep worshiping keep seeking the holy spirit keep praying for people up front god bless you my first love, my only hope, only you can satisfy. My first love, my only hope, only you can satisfy. My first love, my only hope, only you can satisfy. You're my first love, my only hope, only you can satisfy. You're my first love, my only hope, only you can satisfy my first love, my only hope, only you can satisfy. My first love, my only hope, only you can satisfy. My first love, my only hope, only you can satisfy. I just want you, and 
nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do, cause I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just want you I just want you I just want